Okay, so this is number 11 from 2.8, section 2.8, which was all about vertical angles. So, you know, that probably will come into play in this question. So, this is a proof. Obviously, it's a proof because it doesn't ask you to find anything. It asks you to prove a conclusion. Well, the conclusion is that angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. So, you're given that GD bisects angle CBE. So, the fact that GD, um, this line here, bisects angle CBE tells you one thing in particular and that is it cuts that angle in half which means angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So the first thing I want to do always is write the given. Second I'm going to look at what I'm, what I'm given and see what I can say <coughs> from that. <coughs> so angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. That is strictly from the given and if bisector then to congruent angles. Okay? So that's what I, I use the given. So now I gotta look at the picture and see if there's any other information I can use to finally prove what I'm trying to prove. That is angle one and angle two are congruent. So angle one and angle two are congruent. I can't say that straight off, but I do see a pair of vertical angles with one and three. So I'm gonna say that. And you can assume vertical angles from a picture because you can assume straight lines. You could assume vertical angles, angle one, is congruent to angle 3. I'm actually going to write it in a little different order. I'm going to say angle 3 is congruent to angle 1. You're going to see why in a second. So you can see that transitive property. But this is what we learned in 2.8, which is if vertical angles, then they are congruent. So I see, okay, I got 2 is congruent to 3. 3 is congruent to 1. So you see the ends of the chain also need to be congruent which means angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent, which is actually what I'm trying to prove. So that's the transitive property in practice. And that's how you would prove uh, the conclusion in number 11 from section 2.8.